Feature flags help you release features and conditionally show content. This tutorial shows you how to integrate them in your Vue.js app using PostHog. We'll create a basic view app, add PostHog, create a feature flag, and then implement the flag to control content in your app. For this tutorial, we will create a basic Vue 3 application. First, before we get started, make sure that you have Node.js installed. This tutorial is based on version 18 or newer. And if you don't already have a PostHog account, go to posthog.com and create your free account before starting this tutorial. All right, so once you do that, we have a clean new project. Let's go ahead and install the Vue CLI by doing an npm install dash G at Vue CLI. This will install all the dependencies that we need to be able to create a Vue application. After you install that dependency, let's go ahead and say Vue create Vue feature flags. Now, the project name for this tutorial is the Vue Feature Flags. You can name this whatever you would like, but again, for this tutorial, I'm gonna be naming it Vue Feature Flags. And once you do this, we're gonna be asked this question. I'm gonna go with default Vue 3, Babel, and ESLint. And if it's your very first time ever using Vue, it's going to ask you if you wanna use NPM as your package manager. For this tutorial, I am gonna be using NPM. Here we can say add the Git repository or not. I'm just gonna say no, but if you wanna add it to a GitHub or some kind of remote repository, you might wanna say yes there. All right, after we do this, let's go ahead and make sure that we CD into our view feature flags. And inside here, the very first thing I'm gonna do is just go ahead and jump into our app.view. And I'm gonna replace this with a new template of div ID equals app, where an H1 tag is gonna say, this is our view.js feature flags tutorial. And if we go ahead and say npm run serve, this will start up your view.js application. So here we can see at our localhost 8080, this is our Vue.js feature flags tutorial. So now this tutorial is about how to integrate PostHog with Vue.js 3. If you're gonna be using Vue 2, you can go to posthog.com and look into their documentation where they do have a document on how to set up PostHog with Vue 2. So again, this tutorial is for Vue 3 and PostHog. So once you create your PostHog free account, we can come back down to our terminal. I'm going to stop our application and I'm gonna say npm install posthog-js. And then I'm gonna click enter. This is going to install all the dependencies that we need for posthog to work in our view application. Let's then go into our source directory and create a new folder where we're gonna name this plugins. And inside our plugins, let's go ahead and say new file where we name this posthog.js. And then inside our posthog.js, we can see that we're gonna import posthog from our new library that we just installed. We have export default install app where we have our app.config global properties. Now inside here, we need to set up our posthog API key and our posthog API host. If you log in into your posthog account and then you go into settings, if you scroll down, we can see our project API key. But if you scroll up a little bit, we have this web snippet. And inside our posthog.init, we have our API key followed by our API host. So what we can do here is just go ahead and grab this API key, go back into your application, and replace this string with your API key. And then you can go back into your posthog account and grab your host. Now what we can do is go into our main.js and swap out this code, which is going to include our posthog plugin, which is going to be inside our plugins.posthog. And we can see that the only thing it really added was this import, and now we have an app.use posthog plugin. Now if we go ahead and say npm run serve, and we go back into our web app, we can go into our activity, and we can see that we have a new page view event that was captured just a few seconds ago. Now, PostHog by default captures a ton of events, which is what's awesome about PostHog because PostHog will just capture a ton of events, which just means you have to do less work up front. Now, what we wanna do is create a feature flag. So if we go in here, we can say feature flags, create a feature flag. I'm gonna name this my cool flag. 
I'm gonna scroll down and I'm going to set our release candidate to everyone. So if you scroll up, roll out to 100%, this means it'll go to all 100% of users. Now we can click save at the top right or save in the bottom right if you scroll all the way down. Now you can customize release conditions with rollout percentages and user or group properties to fit your needs if you need to change it outside of 100% users. So now let's go back into our application. Let's go into our app.view and let's replace this file keeping our same template so we have our div ID of app with an H1 tag that now says title text. And our title text is gonna be waiting for feature flag. And then we're going to mount this and create our post hog variable, which is going to check our feature flags. And if the feature flag is enabled, which is my cool flag, which is what we named our feature flag in post hog, we're gonna get our flag is enabled. Else, we're gonna get our flag is disabled. So I'm gonna turn off my application and do a new npm run serve. I'm gonna go back into my browser and refresh. We can see that it's saying waiting for a feature flag for like 0.1 seconds, and then it says our feature flag is enabled. And this is our post hog library that we installed into our view application, checking for our cool flag in our post hog web app. Now this 0.2 milliseconds or 0.1 milliseconds text flickers might be a little annoying because when your app loads, post hog has to make a request to fetch the flag value. To prevent this and you have your feature flags available immediately, you can initialize post hog with pre-computed flag values until it has a chance to fetch them. Now, this entire process is called bootstrapping. To do this, we need to use the bootstrap key in post hog's initialization configuration and add feature flag values there. So let's go back into our code and let's go into our post hog JS. And what we wanna do is right under our API host, let's go ahead and pass in a bootstrap value which is gonna have feature flags of my cool flag, which is true. Now, if we go back into our application, we can see that by default, because of our initialization, our feature flag is enabled, but this removes the weight of it saying like waiting for feature flag, which just makes a significantly smoother flow for our app. All right, well, this is what we wanted to show for feature flags using Vue 3, and I will see you in the next video.